Let's say your job is to scan through hours and hours of network footage. Let's say your job is to sit on your network and find all the interesting tidbits of information that you possibly can. Now, you could create a home-built setup. You could tie together a couple of Raspberry Pis, maybe a few tuners, uh, definitely some capture equipment, or you could just use Snapstream. I'm speaking with Rakesh Agrawal, the CEO of Snapstream. Rakesh, what is Snapstream? Yeah, so uh, Snapstream is a, is a device that allows you to record lots of television and then, uh, then do different things with that television. You can, uh, you can search inside the shows. That's how folks like The Daily Show and Last Week Tonight get all of their TV clips. Uh, you can also stream the recordings over the network so that you put a DVR at the fingertips of all your users on the network. Uh, and then we have integration with Twitter and Facebook. So when you see a clip of last night's primaries or one of the political debates or the MTV Video Music Awards, there's a good chance that Snapstream was used to push small clips or a GIF to Twitter and Facebook um, of those moments. That's, that's just fantastic because I know there's a lot of people who are always wondering about The Daily Show or about what John Oliver does with his program. Do they have staff members who are just watching these channels 24-7 in order to pull out the juiciest tidbits? And no, they, they use a solution like this that can help them record, identify, and then pull all those little bits and pieces into the broadcast. What, what did they do before Snapstream? Yeah, well, I th actually, it, today, I think they do both. They, uh, they still have people that are obsessively watching TV um, because, you know, the, the sort of fuzzy notion of, oh, hey, that could make a great joke is still, right. you know, the domain of, uh, of great producers and writers. But, uh, but, yeah, what they did before was they had, uh, like the Daily Show specifically, is they had unpaid interns that would go, go for this stuff <laughs> very happily. Um, that's, a good, yeah, that's a good internship. You watch TV. <laughs> exactly. And uh, so, so now, now instead of, you know, those interns are doing more productive work because the work that would take them hours before, go find every place where, um, you know, they're mentioning Obama and health care or... Trump and small hands, that's done in seconds with Snapstream now. Now, let's talk a little bit how it actually works. So I install this box into my colo, into my network, make sure that it's on my LAN so that I can, I can have access for all of my employees or whoever needs to look at the footage. But uh, how do I configure it? What, what are the things that I would need in my building in order to make Snapstream work properly? Yeah, Snapstream is a lot like your home DVR. So you take your, uh, your TV feed, whether it's uh, satellite or cable or antenna uh, or a house cable feed, for example, and you plug that TV feed into uh, the Snapstream appliance. Um, that's a, a box that can record up to 10 television shows at a time. And so it's like a DVR on steroids. Uh, and then you connect that box into your network. The, the Snapstream server itself sits inside of a closet somewhere or a data center inside your building and you use it from within any web browser on your desktop mac or pc one of the things we're showing here at nab is uh, support native support for the ipad and then from that client you have a program guide you tell it what to record uh, unlike your home dvr we have options to record a channel 24 7. so you could record cnn all the time forever into perpetuity uh, you know, and do that for 10 different channels. We have an in-house test system where we're recording 30 channels of TV. Our largest customer probably records 100 channels of broadcast television concurrently. So, and then, you know, once the shows are recorded or even while they're being recorded, you can uh, tweet moments to, to uh, uh, you can tweet moments as a GIF or as a screenshot. You can add meme text to the, to the screenshots. Uh, you can upload native videos to Twitter and to Facebook. Uh, and then we have search capabilities. You can say, um, you know, show me all the mentions of, uh, of, of Trump small hands and it will instantly go <laughs> find all those. Or you can, you know, we're, we're, we have, we're really deep in search. Um, we have a guy, uh, we have a team member who has a PhD in uh, computer science and specializes in something called NLP, uh, natural language programming. And uh, so it's language algorithms. So he does things to clean up the closed captioning because closed captioning is not 
uh, always great. Is it pulling that search off of the closed captioning or is it actually recognizing speech and turning it into text? No, the closed captioning is the basis okay. for our search. It's a, it's a combination, but closed captioning is like the bulk of what we're searching. We, we also search over the metadata about the shows, which is data that we license. Um, it's the data that comprises the program guide. But primarily, we're searching over closed captioning. So it, it is a DVR on steroids, but it's also not, because my DVR doesn't have the ability to have me say, show me 15 clips that have this phrase in it, or show me 20 clips that deal with a Washington, D.C. story. That, I think that's the key to making Snapstream actually useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's definitely beyond what your okay, DVR yeah. can do. The, the integration with Twitter and Facebook, same thing. It's beyond what a DVR can do. In a lot of ways, what we do as a company broadly, you know, the social integration, um, the, the uh, ability to stream video, TV over the network, we, we do things that consumer DVRs don't do um, so that businesses and organizations who rely on television in one way or the other can leverage television for whatever their mission is. Right, right. Uh, how many users can stream at the same time? So let's say I start getting programming on my Snapstream. Hmm. Uh, 400 people, 200 people, 12 people? Yeah, um, so, so actually uh, that is a great question because we are, we're pushing into, into schools where you'll have a school district that has uh, 5,000 classrooms or 10,000 classrooms, 100 schools, 50 classrooms per school, and they want to be able to push television to all of those teachers. So theoretically you could have you know, 5,000 people push play at the same time. And uh, so that actually is our limit right now is about 5,000 concurrent playback sessions um, streamed over. Uh, and, we're, and we're pushing that limit specifically for this new thing called Snapstream EDU. Uh, the DVR product, which we have at all these TV shows and government organizations, uh, the limit on that generally is about 100 concurrent playback sessions. But it, it's not an easy question to answer because it depends on the network bandwidth within that organization and it depends on exactly you know, what quality that they're recording things at. But as you know, you, you can't take for granted uh, video streaming inside of an organization because uh, it's, it, it is a bit of, can be a challenging problem. Right, right. Now, I, I have to ask this. Is there a strategy in case someone at a broadcasting association comes to you and says, wait a minute, it sounds an awful, like, a lot, awful lot like rebroadcasting. Because I, I mean, I, I understand the use case. In an organization that does something like The Daily Show or something, something like uh, you know, This Week, Next Week, or whatever it was with John Oliver. Last Week Tonight. Last yeah. Week Tonight, thank you. But when you start dealing with like a school or a campus, does it become rebroadcasting if you've got 100 users who are pulling down the same broadcast at the same time? Yeah, so, uh, so first of all, you know, most of our customers are using Snapstream in the context of fair use. Right. Um, there's a well-established set of laws, and the model that we have with Snapstream is a lot like uh, a VCR. And that's, that, that, that mode of use has been tried all the way up to the Supreme Court. There was an old case, MPAA versus, versus Sony, Betamax, and so that's... I think that, uh, that whole model is well covered. Um, as far as distribution within schools, most of the schools that we do work with, they strike agreements with their cable providers that allow for that kind of distribution. So they're, they're, it's basically um, for that organization, the limits are set. So what's next? I mean, this, this is a very unique product. It has a very, very unique use case that uh, you know I, I think has made many people laugh and can also be incredibly informative. If, if you do have a social media outreach, this is a fantastic way for you to scan through the media to look for mentions of your product, your service. But going beyond that, maybe looking towards NAB 2017, 2018, where would you like to see Snapstream grow? What would you like to see the market to push into? So I think the Probably today, right now, the fastest growing part of Snapstream is the integration with Twitter and Facebook. We, uh, we're doing a lot there, and that's where we're adding the most customers. Probably this time next year, uh, I'll say the same thing about what we're doing with education. That product is a little bit different. It's the same general category of, uh, you could say, like making TV more internet-like 
for within organizations. Uh, and we see that problem in schools. We see schools wanting to be able to easily push television, just like they push internet access to teachers, giving, giving the same teachers the tool of accessing uh, TV programming. That's another information service that they want to provide to them. We've been speaking with Rakesh Agarwal. He is the CEO of Snapstream. If you are looking for a solution to record multiple channels of video and then have the ability to pluck out the choice gems, this really is the only solution. Rakesh, thank you very much for speaking with us. If they wanted to find out more about Snapstream, if they wanted to see if maybe you have the solution for them, where can they go? Uh, we don't have a website. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, <laughs> www.snapstream.com.